Welcome, everybody. This is How to English Teach and Learn with Gav, M, and John. Hi. It, sorry. It's a podcast. Hi, John. It's a podcast about teaching and learning English as a foreign language. All opinions stated are personal, and references will be given when necessary. Okay, so thank you, John, for meeting us. We're um, so、Pleasure. pleased to have you on the show. So thank you for having me. You are John from John's English page on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and you are a very influential person. We've been watching you for a while, and、uh, we're just amazed at your content. Come on. Yeah, very influential. It's very kind of you to say so.、Uh, I don't know because I don't really get to leave the house. I just sit here <laughs> making stuff. So I haven't had a chance to step back and see what's happening, really. I say we've got so many questions to ask you about your inspiration and, you know, just <laughs> what, what comes to you what, before you start making your videos and all these、um, really cool posts for IG and everything. So,、mm. um, I would like to start my first question with、um, what was your inspiration to start your IG channel?、Um, well, I, to be honest,、um, it, it, it kind of just happened. I mean, it was, we, we obviously went through you know, lockdown、uh, in 2020.、Um, and before the summer of 2020, really, I, I had an Instagram account, but I never used it. It was kind of just a personal. Thing which I just put the occasional picture of me on the beach and things like that. Well, I don't even, it was just sort of random p i c t u r e I didn't even know what it was for. I didn't understand why people had Instagram. So, I mean, we were at those sort of levels, you know. And then, as、um, when lockdown,、uh, you know, everything about March sort of time, I transferred all my teaching on, online.、Uh, and so that was quite a learning curve for me going from, you know, face to face teaching to. Digital learning.、Um, and over the next couple of months, I suppose I, I kind of got into this kind of whole thing of teaching online. And it seemed to me, it, it seemed a you know, relevant thing to do to maybe start an Instagram account to teach English as well. I didn't really know where it was going to go, but I thought, well, I'll just start and see how it goes. So that was really the, the, you know, but a year ago, really, just over a year ago, I, I, I didn't even know what an Instagram story was. I mean, I was, I was asking people, what are, the, what are stories? What are they? So, I mean, it's been a, a, a big journey for me, really.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was a really steep learning curve. Like,、um, you probably、yeah. have a similar background to me, which is not in IT. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Exactly. And then when you, when you see all these like amazing things that people are sharing and doing, all the posts that are really interactive and everything, and you think,、mm. wow, that's so cool. And yeah, yeah. so you taught yourself basically. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively, everything that I've done, I, I mean, I, I went through the whole thing of learning how to use, you know, to make, you know,、uh, presentable slides and, you know, how to, how to add my voice to them and all of these things. It was a case of learning on the job, really. Mm -hmm. So, it, nobody,、mm -hmm. there was nobody there to sort of help me. So, we just sort of like, you know, tried to get as much churned out as possible in the short term, you know. That's very cool. And were you surprised how kind of, did it pick up very quickly or, or did you find that like there weren't many followers for a while or many likes?、Mm -hmm. At the beginning, you, I mean, you probably you know、uh, as well as I do, at the beginning, you kind of have your little. Group of people who comment on each other's posts, you know, so you're kind of like、um, making this sort of like unspoken agreement that you'll kind of like check out each other's feeds and, <laughs>、yeah. you know, you leave a few comments. And, you know, that sort of leads on to maybe some of the followers from the other pages following you and vice versa. But I think the key thing is to obviously to have content that people want to see,、uh, people、mm -hmm. want to watch, and that's easy to digest.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so is that, that sort of simplicity that's.、Um, I, well, well, we'll come to your post in a minute. I wish it was simple. <laughs> the, 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 the product is, is simple for them. Yeah. <laughs> simple for the followers, yeah. yeah. Emma, have you got a question? Yeah, I was just thinking about this kind of. You said it happened organically in a way, but then I suppose when you start to get successful and people are watching and listening and you. You have a sort of USP, maybe, that you start to think, right, this is what I'm doing, this is my thing. So, were you aware of that happening, like the whole pronunciation rock thing? Like,、yeah. how did that happen? Well, I'm going to have to say, to, to begin with, I was、um, one of my biggest inspirations because I, I, I started off with、uh, just 
you know, just posts really. And then I moved on to uh, last summer, I started putting my voice on posts as well, which already for me was like a massive step forward. I was thinking, oh, this is a, it's quite, it's quite nerve wracking, really putting my voice out on social media. Little did I know a year later, I'll be dressing up as a woman dancing around <laughs> on a, on the, on the beach. But anyway, so, you know, things spiraled out of control, maybe. <laughs> but one of my biggest uh, inspirations, I think, was Andy Dow from uh, Parlour English, because I know he, 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 he put a video out about just over a year ago on his first videos. And he said, you know, this is me. I'm, this, I'm the face of Parlour English. And I looked at him and thought, God, oh, he's got some guts, you know, putting his face on there as well, you know, and speaking on. So that kind of pushed me to try and actually make some videos uh, and to speak on the videos as well. But it takes a, a time, a little while for you to find your mm. character, your personality, especially, especially on my page. Well, I don't know who I am half the time because I've got <laughs> so many different characters, you know. So, But even yeah. yourself, it's, it's hard to find yourself mm. because... You know, you don't quite know what whether you're supposed to actually be yourself or you're supposed to be some some larged up version of yourself, or is it, you know? So the yeah. John that stands on pronunciation rock isn't really the same John that does a cup of tea with John, but you know, this but it's still me, but it's hard to explain that really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we can say the same really with our podcast. It's sort of you lose yourself for a little while and then you kind of think, well, what is this person and who is this that I want to present to the world? Um, but Andy, is that Gavin? Is that yeah, Andy? Yeah, that is Andy. That yeah, is we Andy. We worked with Andy. <laughs> yeah, oh, you worked with him? Yeah. yeah in in okay. Seville. Yeah, he's great. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. It's a small world, isn't it? Tiny. Yeah. Tiny <laughs> little <amazing>. world. <laughs> now, I, yeah. thought, I thought you must have known, well, not known each other, but I mean, I've seen that you've commented on each other's stuff I saw you know, a few months ago. So I, I knew that there was some sort of link there, but I didn't know you actually knew him. Well, no, I, did, I didn't realise that was Andy. When I saw this parlour lounge, mm. and I was like, oh, yeah. that's an interesting name. And then actually this, this guy's style is kind of familiar. And then eventually, as you said, like then his face appeared like, oh, it's Andy. Wow. OK. Yeah. Yeah, and I think also, um, yeah, there was definitely in your um, posts, there was a key moment, I think, and it kind of blew up. And I, I knew Andy was focused on it and a lot of others that I was sort of following. And I think it was the video you made of the robbery in your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I think it just it was so funny to watch, you know, like it's just your actions as well. They're all, you know, very simplistic and sort of, you know, yeah. contained within the short thing. That's um, the real well, job. <laughs> Simplistic <laughs> actions. So, what, why do you think, like, a video trends? Why, why does one thing really work and others just don't seem to? Any ideas? In general, or the things that I've been making? Well, like with yours, I mean, because that that one was clearly very catchy. I mean, everybody wanted to comment and and you know say how much they enjoyed that one. Mm. Um, I, you know, I didn't really think about that. I mean, I, I, because I, I didn't really understand how the whole thing worked. You know, I just kind of thought, I just want to make stuff that is going to be a useful and b watchable. So, mm-hmm. you know, what can I do? I, I didn't know because I don't have a background in acting. I don't have a background in present presenting. You know, maybe it's part of my character, but I've never done anything like that. So I was just experimenting with things. I think. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I've got, I, I'll admit I've got quite a good imagination. So, I mean, you know, if, if, if I've got something I have to present, then I can probably come up with something. The limits are technically what we have actually got to do it, you know, mm-hmm. otherwise we're spending thousands on, um, <laughs> you know, props and stuff like that. But, uh, so yeah, it wasn't really a case of following any trends. I mean, as times progressed, I've noticed that the. Mm, the posts which tend to get the most views tend to be reels, full screen reels uh, on films. You know, people mm-hmm. tend to really like them, mm-hmm. even if it's some, you know, it, sometimes it's a bit soul destroying, you know, because I'll sit and write something and I'll spend the whole the morning trying to carve something out. And I think it's really clever and intelligent and I'll post it and it'll get like half the number of views of one where I just cut a bit of paper and pull a stupid face and put cut. <laughs> you know yeah. so it's difficult to understand really yeah, yeah. i think definitely my, my favorites are, are the really simple ones where it's like you just pointing at something or you mm. just waiting for something you know they, yeah. they, for some reason they're really appealing yeah well, i think they're easy to watch aren't they <clears throat> and also people don't have to you don't have the language <laughs> i shouldn't be saying that if it's an english page you don't have the language problem 
because people can just watch it, you know. So, yeah, well, it's that maybe passive learning as well, like without because you see some people and they're quite heavy the stuff that they're teaching, whereas others maybe want to just sit there and just be taught one or two words every few seconds. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think it suits the format when it's one very concentrated thing that you're getting at and it's sort of simple and easy to understand. I think that is a winner. Um, so, what about? Um, long term are you thinking just like week to week or are you thinking in the future where you, do you want a budget do you want to go to shops buy the props and have like a whole studio well i mean it, it's, it's it's pretty much taken over all of my spare time you know so uh, and and all of my spare cash because i mean I, it does cost money it costs a, a lot of money really to 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 keep sponsoring posts because you can't grow well Personally, I've found it very difficult to grow without having some sponsored posts. Um, and they're not, I don't put adverts out um, mm. because I just don't really have anything to sell at the, at the moment. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't know what to advertise. I mean, I, there are, I've, I've got some ideas for things and pro products that I want to come out with, you know, when the time is right. But in the short term, it's kind of a two phase project. The first project is to try to build a, a large following of people who are happy to interact with the page and so that seems to be going okay so mm -hmm. and then once you know you've, you've got the right number of people then you can decide what you want to do next mm -hmm. but I think the key thing is to always put yourself in the in the position of the followers you know um, you know however much you love doing it you've got to remember that you know you're doing it for, for people who want something they want to be a they want to learn English and b they want to be entertained in a, in a way that's you know, it's light, it's not too heavy, I think, because otherwise they wouldn't be on social media. They'd be <laughs> at university or something, you know, studying there, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, That's yeah. a really good point, because, um, yeah, looking at, I mean, you're, you're, you're approaching a 100,000, is it? Yeah, something like that, well, 80-odd thousand. We're okay. A little way to go, yeah. A little way to go. But, I mean, you, you can look at other people's social networks at their their pages and they've got you know 20,000 60,000 whatever and you look at their posts and nobody's interacting with them and you think oh okay this is maybe they're getting these paid uh, mm. followers and that's mm. it makes such a difference where you've got actual interactions with your own followers and that's yeah. obviously you're doing a good job because I can see on all of your posts you're getting a lot of response from that. Well, that one of the, if, if I had to give any, I, mean, I, I find it absolutely absurd that I'm going to give advice to people on how to grow. It's just ridiculous. I mean, this. Well, you've got the t shirt, podcast, John. What, what's next? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm, trying, I'm pretending that I don't get it. I'm going to say, yeah. so, I mean, it's like a step back all of a sudden because, you know, sitting down and talking to you, it's like, you know, you, you actually have a chance to think about what's happening, I suppose, because you get so uh, into the daily kind of production of stuff. Um, I, I, I can't. I can't pretend anymore, can I? I should have. I should have worn something else. I should have said like humble or something like that. <laughs> but I think that the main thing is, to, as I say, to make sure that you're you've you've got something in that post that people can, you know, where possible can re relate to or can re so react to rather. So you know, a question, uh, a game, um, you know, a challenge, mm, you know, something personal for them because. Basically, everybody wants the chance to 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 say something or to be heard or to be funny or whatever it is that you're trying to do. You know, so trying to get them involved, I think, is fundamental. That's quite an achievement. With sorry, with with thousands of people, I mean, that's that's a real achievement. Yeah, it gets easier with that. thousands of people. To be honest with you. Uh -huh. okay. Can we come back to that in a second? I was just going to yeah. say, I think what you've just said kind of sums up teaching in general. Like what you've done, you've applied. The sort of rules of teaching to making video content and I think that's the key like just keep it relevant keep it about what the students want or what the watchers followers are going to want and uh, yeah accessible so I think as long as you keep that in mind yeah definitely it's going to yeah, be well, keep it, keeping it about what the students can do making it about yeah. what they can do exactly. uh, as, you, as you well know it's a it's a yeah. you know one of the most important things of teaching you you're focusing on what they can do not on what they can't do so mm -hmm. i you know i do when people ask me i will actually help them with their with their grammar where possible i can't do that with eighty thousand right. people it's a bit much but i don't go through correcting everybody's stuff because i'd like to encourage people to participate 
it's not all about being perfect with your English, you know, with your or any language when you're learning it. It's about having a real reason to use it. Mm. Uh, and you know, when you if you can create that on a page, then you know you're giving people a chance to actually use it. And you know, people might ask me to, is this correct? And I'll tell them if it is. But yeah, I agree. I prefer to focus on the positives. Mm-hmm. How do sorry, I just want to go back. How is it easier with a hundred thousand people? <laughs> it's easier because you automatically get more interaction. Yeah, you know, you, so things kick off much quicker. If you've got, you know, a thousand followers, which I had for quite a long time, you know, then maybe you'll get a few comments, but you don't get many. So there's not much to react to. They don't react to each other so much. Um, mm-hmm. So I think the more that people you have, I suppose if you think of it as a concert, you know, if you've got a big stadium full of people, you're going to get a bigger feedback than if you're doing a, a local gig. Although a local gig could also be very good, you know, don't get me wrong. Maybe mm-hmm. if you've got fewer followers and they're also very interactive, which is the key thing, really, rather than the huge number. I mean, you're going to get loads of dormant, literally dormant uh, followers who maybe don't participate. So, you know, it's not a realistic number, really. I think it's how many actually participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to change the topic now. Tell us about Alan. (laughs) Well, Alan, (laughs) yeah, Alan came, came, came into my life, I suppose, last Christmas, because he was, uh, I went to this sort of animal sanctuary, and there was this, they only had one kitten there. I saw him, I thought, well, I'll take him home and make him, uh, give him a home. So he's he's kind of made himself at home very quickly, and um, he's he's taken over now. He, he's the boss. Was his name uh, originally Alan, or did you? No, it was Rocky. Oh. Yeah, they called him Rocky for some reason, and I thought, well, that's just a ridiculous name. So I changed it immediately to <laughs> to, to Alan. He may, he looks he like think, an Alan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Looks, he behaves more like an Alan. <laughs> so. So I actually I explained that to the vet. Obviously, I'm in Italy as well, so it's even more complicated trying to explain to the vet that I changed it from Rocky to Alan. And he was just looking at me like, why kind of thing? Because Rocky, <laughs> it's easy for the Italians, Rocky, because it finishes with a vowel sound, you know, but then Alan is like... <laughs> oh, that's the best story ever. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. But talking about pronunciation does, does that affect some of your activities or the the videos that you make when you do the um the pronunciation videos what do you is mean? that do you think about your italian students or are you thinking about you know what kind of typical mistakes that international students or what, what kind of what what's in mind in your mind then mm-hmm. well when i'm with pronunciation my, my main issue it's actually a very good point that you brought up because my background, my original teaching, I started off teaching in, in Britain to multi you know, cultural classes with people from different nationalities, literally 12 people in a class, 12 nationalities. So originally I used to teach to all sorts of different you know, people from the different languages, sort of mother tongues. But then I moved to Italy and I've been here for a long time now, nearly, nearly 20 years. So most of my teaching has been to Italians. So I... I started off really most of my followers were Italian uh, because that's where I am and I suppose you know it was kind of aimed towards people that I knew people that you know knew friends of friends and then it sort of branched out a little bit but most of them were it- Italian and I put a couple of Italian posts on as well you know like differences between Italian and English going back a few months so it was kind of aimed at Italians but I decided that I didn't want to just do that I love Italians and I love teaching Italians, but I thought, you know, there's a whole world of people out there. So, but this is a very good question because obviously my my background is really mostly Italian, te- teaching Italians. So a lot of the problems that I encounter, or all of them really, are, you know, typical Italian pronunciation problems, but not just pronunciation, also grammar. Mm-hmm. So to try to get around that with pronunciation rock, that's why I asked people to send me their you know, pronunciation problems. So that again, making it interactive, but also letting the people choose the people, the people, let the people uh, choose the, um, you know, the the words that they want me to pronounce. So if I choose them, then obviously it's going to come from a, a base of words, which I know my students have problems with. Um, so yeah, they're probably definitely influenced by Italians, but I hope that it encompasses more than that. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, I definitely think that the Italian mistakes that you're picking up on pronunciation are, are going to be quite international uh, against mm-hmm. quite uh, across quite a few countries there. So that's, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Em, have you got a question? Would you uh, like me yeah. to? I was just going to also ask about the live quiz that you do on mm-hmm. Sunday. Um, how is it doing that compared to doing the kind of pre-record or the rehearsed video content? Do you enjoy um, the live stuff? Um, well, I remember again. I can say it's all fresh in my memory. The first time I did anything, you know, because I say it's all been over the, over a year, space of a year. So my first live, I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to start doing lives, but I thought, well, who now who am I going to be now? You know, <laughs> I just really don't know it because I started off making films where I didn't even really talk. It was just miming, you know, I'd be walking around doing something and I'd just put a voice over, you know, like pick up or down or something like that. <laughs> and that would be it. So it was kind of cheating in a way, you know, I, I'd be on there, but I didn't have to actually say anything. Then I moved on to actually speaking on the videos. And the next step, logical step, was to do lives. Mm. And I was, you know, I just thought, who am I going to be when I do a live? I don't really know. So um, to cut a long story short, I love them. I really like, I feed off the energy of doing the lives with the people. I just, I don't know, something just takes over me and I just go for it. I don't, it doesn't, at the beginning there were a few nerves maybe. I think it's normal. now I, I don't feel nervous about it. I'm just anxious to make sure it's excellent live for everybody. I do a lot of preparation, you know, to make sure the slides are up to scratch. And, you know, right. so it's it's fun, great fun. And I love the spontaneity. That's really great. I think that makes all the difference, obviously, if you enjoy it. And then it, half the yeah. work done, isn't it? Contagious for other people. Uh, yeah, I think may, 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 that's all my questions, really, Gav. Have you got any okay. other? I, do, I wanted to know, you, you mentioned about, you know, standing in, 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 and pointing and picking up and things like that. Are there any yeah. funny incidents that happen during that? Or, or do people think you're doing some sort of performance phase? <laughs> um, you mean when I've been filming? Um, mm. Usually, um, to be honest with you, I've noticed that people really don't give a shit what you're doing <laughs> because I've, got, I've gone out and I've done the most stupid things and people just walk past as if nothing's, wow. nothing's happened. So, you know, <laughs> you're worried about it maybe to start with and then you realise, you know, even in packed tourist places mm. and I'm just like pointing at stuff and people just walk past you, they don't even look back. <laughs> so it's, it's a quite an interesting lesson of life, you know, people just don't really care what you're doing, you know, so get out there and do it. <laughs> um, that's one thing but I, I there is a funny story when I went to I went to a a shop to to, <laughs> to buy a pink dress um, <laughs> a big one so that I could wear it and um looked like Auntie Bessie who's one of my characters and mm-hmm. so I went to this sort of cheap Chinese shop which sold all these like women's clothes and I went in <laughs> And I was, I was cheap, but I, by this stage, I didn't care, really didn't care about anything anymore. I just got, I'd been posting pictures of myself and films of myself on social media to thousands of people for months and nothing seemed strange to me anymore. So I went in and I got this big pink dress and I went and tried it on <laughs> in the changing room. And I came out to look in the mirror and the Chinese woman came running up to me. I said, I, I, look, I'm going to, in a dress, I'm going to buy it. So, you know, okay. it was me sort of arguing with this Chinese woman while I was in a big pink dress. So, yeah, I suppose but that. You did, you did buy it, though, yeah? I did. I felt I had to. <laughs> I didn't wear it out, though. I, I... One of those moments where you catch yourself and think, hmm, this is what's happening now. Okay. Yeah, looking, looking back, I think she was probably in the right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Oh, wonderful. Wonderful experience. Okay, I I think my final question is um, about which way to cut the toast. Did Alan finally (laughs) find out what that was the best angle or? Yeah, um, I I think overall, most people tend to prefer triangular, uh, singular, single cut, you know, diagonally. Okay, from edge to edge. Yeah, from edge to, well, yeah, from corner to corner. The corner, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really count up all the, or maybe I should have, maybe I was a bit superficial there. I, oh, really? Okay. I really want to know. The, so you, the just, you just put it there and, and let it run. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I did, I did comment, but I didn't go through counting them all up. I mean, it's not going to change how I have my toast. Mm. How do you have yours, Gavin? Just out of interest, you. I don't cut it. I just put, really I go straight whole for thing. it. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. And yeah, I think I do the two rectangles down the middle. I'm afraid. It's yeah, just... well, I don't apologise. I mean, you know, that's yeah. what makes the world the rich <laughs> and varied place it is. Yeah, there's something a bit sort of dangerous about the corners when you cut it corner to corner. It's just so angular. Dangerous. It yeah. Depends how long it? you leave the toast in the toaster, I suppose. <laughs> Okay, that's absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much for your time, John. I feel that Pleasure. we've got some some really good hints and tips for um, how we can improve our social networks and continue to get more and more uh, influence over the world until world domination, obviously. <laughs> Same as you. And um, you good, luck. There first. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck with your drive to get to 100k. I'm, I'm sure you're going to have um, all, all of those followers soon. So good luck with everything. Thank you, John. Thank you, both of you. It was a real pleasure. And um, yeah, so everybody check out John's English page. Uh, do you prefer them to go to Instagram or TikTok or YouTube? What, where do you uh, send Instagram. them? Instagram. Instagram is the is the main one. That's where I started. TikTok was a kind of a side venture, which just mm -hmm. suddenly I had a viral video of me skipping through a park and with Michael Jackson music. And then okay. that it overtook everything that I was doing. So that it was a side hustle that kind of <laughs> okay. spiraled out of that's another story but uh, so yeah instagram yeah i've got okay. um, I'm, I'm trying to get a foothold in youtube as well but it's you know as you well know it's difficult to produce stuff in different formats for you know maybe one day i'll start doing that as well but instagram's the one fantastic all right thanks very much for your time john thank you take care thanks bye, a lot bye bye bye, bye. What a nice chat that was, Gav, and what a nice chap John is. John is a very, very nice chap, and that was an absolutely delightful and insightful conversation, Em. It was, Gav. So, I think it's shout-out time, isn't it? It is. Cue the music. Starting with Karen, English teacher. Thank you very much. Walking languages. Ingles underscore com underscore Leah. Deal with Kinga. Danny Kiar with two R's, the end. Underscore my new English. The Roving Reporter. English Now Russia. English SBZ. Learn dot with dot A. Passionate Teachers ELT. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. We really appreciate your support and your comments. So Gab, this week's special guest to finish the show is Tony Kaizen. So Tony's approach is amazing. He's got all these really helpful videos that have small chunks of language, phrases that you can listen to and it's really helpful to pick up these very natural ways of speaking. Tony's style is to teach you the English you won't learn in school, which I think is fantastic. And is very, very cool. It is very cool. You can find Tony on Instagram with the handle English with Kaizen, where you can find loads of really interesting and helpful stuff. Thank you very much, Tony. Really appreciate your contribution. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tony Kaizen. I'm an English teacher from the United States of America. Now, first, I want to give a big shout out to Gav and M for featuring me on the show today. Now, we as English teachers and educators, we're constantly looking for new and creative ways to teach our language to our students because let's be honest, the technical parts of a language like grammar, for example, are not always the most interesting things to study every day, right? And I've taught myself two foreign languages and listening to music was a big part of my success because music gives us a chance to practice pronunciation that sounds natural it gives us a chance to learn about the culture from a particular country and it's much easier and much more fun to remember things when we put them into songs so if you're interested in learning more about the english language or american culture then you can check me out on instagram at english with kaizen i'm constantly posting new videos there or you can check out some longer form content on youtube at youtube.com slash life in 
English. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, and I want to thank Gavin M. one more time for having me featured on the show. You guys take care. If you having trouble with pronunciation, then this is your reminder that you just gotta be patient. Keep on trying, give it time. All you gotta do is put it in your mind, give it effort. Now you're getting better every single time. Put the work in, imitate the greats, and you'll become a greater person. It's no need to be scared, and there's no need to be nervous. I know you're feeling tired, and I know your head hurting, but I promise you, homie, it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Life in English. If you a real one, then you know It ain't by where you at, it's who you with You don't gotta cross the globe to learn a bunch of languages All you really gotta do is find a partner that's legit Then get them on the phone, dog. Don't send no f***ing messages, that's wasting time Keep your mind on your language and your language on your mind Gotta speak, read, listen, and scribble on the lines Don't overcomplicate it, man, this message here is simple It's Tony Zen with the Kyber in the middle, yeah Yeah, 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 Hey, It's life in English, yeah, boom.